Hey, this is Travis Ryan from Calvary Cavitation, and you're listening to the Ever Black Podcast. Hey, welcome to this episode of the Ever Black Podcast. I hope everyone is doing all right out there and uh, hanging in, staying, staying at home and staying safe cranking some metal and having a few beers. On this episode, we chat to Jonas Ranks from Catatonia, who are about to release their new album City Burials on April 24 through Peaceville. And as a fan of Catatonia, I really like this album. It's got everything you'd expect uh, from the boys. It's it's still gloomy and moody, and uh, it's got a few different twists and turns in there as well. And uh, Jonas, in, in my opinion, is, is probably one of the best vocalists in, in music, hands down. And uh, also one of my down-to-earth dudes to hang with too he's a really really cool guy uh he had a lot to say about the making of the album his working relationship with anders uh his vocals and and how uh him and the boys usually celebrate album releases together uh how he's uh, going with all the COVID 19 lockdown over there and also talked a little bit of bloodbath too which was really really cool uh great dude fun chat and uh amazing album Dig it. Pre-order Catatonia City Burials now. It's out this Friday, April 24. I'm going to try and get my hands on a vinyl copy because it will sound amazing on that format and uh, it's just like it's made for it. I can't wait. All right, before we go into this episode, I just need to give a shout-out to our good mates at Blacklight Art and Design, who are our go-to for all our screen printing needs. They do shirts, hats, patches, you name it. If you can wear it, they can print it. They've done all our shirts and hats for Ever Black Media, and they're awesome guys, so helpful. www.blacklightad.com.au I uh, also want to give a shout out to our good friends at RW Promotion who are the best in the biz when it comes to stickers, flyers, banners, badges and all other promo you need for your band or business. Go uh, hit Rich and the team up at www.rwpromotion.com.au also want to give a shout out to our good friends at the occult clothing brand Electric Witch who have just launched their winter range and things are going to start getting a little bit chilly down here in uh, Australia so uh, you're going to need some uh, new threads, some new uh brutal hoodies so uh if you're looking for something new and something cool make sure you hit up these guys because uh their new winter range is incredible especially the death dealer hoodie i've got the shirt version of that and i want to get the hoodie uh matt and the team are just absolutely kicking ass so uh go check it out at www.electricwitch.com.au also i want to give a shout out to our good friends at lumber punks axe rain club who have venues on the gold coast brisbane and perth now, they're currently not operating due to the COVID-19 restrictions, but you can throw your support behind the guys by ordering merch or a gift voucher for when they reopen again. And check out what they've got at www.lumberpunks.com. And also like them on the socials. They throw up some really cool videos of uh, all the axe throwing as well. It's, yeah, it's a lot of fun. Don't forget to subscribe to the Ever Black podcast through iTunes podcast, Spotify, Spreaker, YouTube, and Facebook. And check out all our reviews and articles at www.everblackmedia.com and uh, hit us up on all the socials as well. Here is my chat with Jonas Ranks from Catatonia. New album City Burials is out this week on April 24th through Peaceville. It kicks ass. Go pre-order it. You're going to love it. Horns high, people. Enjoy. Jonas, thanks for joining us on the uh, Ever Black podcast. You've just been over there in isolation. Yeah, I mean, it's. Um, I think it's a global... Uh, Thing right now to to just uh, wait uh, this whole situation out. You don't know mm. what, what to expect really. Uh, so uh, I'm just doing what what I'm told to do. So I'm I'm trying to uh, stay at home and stay uh, safe. I'm glad you're staying safe and uh, well over there, dude. Yeah. <laughs> That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> the new Catatonia album, City Burials, is really something some special, man. It, it feels different to previous albums while still having, you know, those key signature elements. What was it that helped that creative growth between this and the fall of art? It's very hard to say because uh, I only do what I, I usually do. I keep writing music and, and try to uh, uh, basically uh, top myself every time. Uh, I think what's been a little bit different this time is that uh, because we had a hiatus from the band, uh, which uh, allowed me to write music without uh, having a deadline. And, and I think that's uh, that's been healthy, not having to think about a certain date that uh, you, you will need uh, 12, 13 songs ready by January the 4th, you know, just... <laughs> 
don't have to think about that. I think that has some impact on the music because uh, it's more free to to wander and just finding new ways. You know, it's it's uh, it, it was a good situation in that way. Well, as a fan, man, like I, you know, I love all your albums. But I really, really loved uh, the Fall of Hearts. But this seems, as I was just saying, like it's such a massive creative jump. I don't know what you were going through. Like, uh, must have must have felt pretty awesome <laughs> at the end of it. Just going, hey, this is you know. I think uh, some of the the stuff on the new album has been uh, maybe subconsciously, but still, uh, it's been written with uh, you know the live performances in mind because. We did a lot of touring for the Fall of Hearts and, and of mm. course, uh, obviously, uh, albums before that. And by doing a lot of touring, you, you can see what people like to get into, uh, what kind of, of parts of songs that go down really well live. And I think that also has uh, sort of helped me in, in creating some of the lively kind of parts. And there are a few on this album that I think uh, will go down pretty well. So... Uh, once the, the whole COVID thing mm. is, <laughs> is uh, blown over, I, I, I'm sure we will get out there and, and try the new songs, and we can't wait, really. It's uh, it's a bit of a unlucky timing to release an album in this uh, sort of situation. But I'm thinking also that you know people will probably have more time on their hands to actually get into the album and listen to music in general, you know, uh, which is a good thing. Absolutely. Have you found that you know the way you and Anders write songs together it, it's changed much between albums is it a different process than say even 10 years ago to get you to this point not really um we we don't really actually sit down together too much and write music we've mm. done that a few times uh usually we write you know uh, in our own homes and then we send ideas back and forth just to get the other one's opinions and we do that also with the other guys in the band, just to to bounce and and, and make sure that everybody's uh, you know feeling the same thing about the, the song ideas and, and the parts that we have. So um, it's not really changed. Uh, it's it's pretty much still the same situation, and I think it works very well for us. Um, you know, we've never been a band that's been jamming songs in a rehearsal room it's never mm. happened uh and i don't think we we will force that to happen just because it seems to be a, a nice way of doing it so if it ain't broken you know we, we're gonna continue doing this i guess but uh you never know it might be different next time <laughs> when saying that with everything on lockdown are you guys planning on celebrating in some way you know like a skype or a zoom beer or a, you know what i mean you guys got plans yeah i ways? mean <laughs> yeah We've been talking about uh, when the album on the release day of the album, we usually uh, us in the band we go out and have a, a nice dinner at some some restaurant and and get drunk. And I think this time we might gather in the rehearsal room if everybody's healthy, um, because in Sweden the, the we don't have a, a a really very strict curfew. We can't mm. actually move move about. Uh, so we're probably just going to lock ourselves in the rehearsal room, get some nice food there and, and just celebrate the release of the album, basically. That sounds like a good plan, man. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds like a real good plan. Because we've got some pretty he heavy restrictions down here now. And, yeah. uh, man, I'm missing jamming so bad. <laughs> yeah. The boy's like, hey, let's do it. No, we'll get in trouble. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. I mean, we're not supposed to go out maybe to restaurants, but you can still do it if you yeah, keep yeah. some distance. Yeah, but yeah. Um, I'm I'm trying to not to, you know. No, no, that's that's a good way to be. But uh, <laughs> you know, another thing about City Barrels is, uh, you know, I think it's one of your strongest vocal performances to date, mate. Like it's it's so many layers, and it's just I can really hear it in there. What what was it the most challenging part about making this album and the vocals for you? Uh, the most challenging is always to uh, to sing it, <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, I do sing a lot of the stuff when I'm writing the songs, uh, but then you don't have to uh, think too much about the performance, but just to get the ideas down. But once it's, uh, you know, the, the, the real recording is, uh, is kind of tedious sometimes. But, uh, you know, if you're 
inspired enough, which I think I was this time, mm. you can make it sound really good in the end. So, you know, and I recorded all the vocals actually in my home studio. I got some really nice equipment and, and because I was, uh, I was getting a tip from uh, my friend Mikael from Opeth. Um, he's been recording uh, vocals on his own for a couple of albums. And he said, you know, you should try it because it's a really nice way of not having to think about uh, what the studio costs and, and what the engineer, yeah. what, what times he want to go home. And so I, I try that. And it's very nice because you, um, you can sing when you feel inspired, even if it's in the middle of the night or, you know, you don't have to rely on, on, someone else's uh, schedule or uh, stuff like that so maybe that's also a, a reason how do you how do you navigate you know having a family and stuff and doing that at home have you got your own little little space little yeah room? yeah i have a, a, my own room that is pretty soundproof and and also we have a a, a few floors in the house so if i'm gonna do vocals i tell tell the the family to uh you know, be on another, another floor. <laughs> <laughs> it's like me when I'm doing interviews. I do it in the garage. So, yeah, you're in my garage yeah. right now. <laughs> there's the other end <laughs> no, of the I, I'm actually in my, my little studio room right now, which is, uh, yeah, it's my little retreat. Ah, uh, excellent. You've got to have it, eh? Little man cave. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> exactly. Well, you also have uh, Annie Bernard from Pull of Keys on, on the song Vanishes as well, and uh, both your voices together just sound incredible. How was it working with her? It was great. Um, uh, I have to say she really got the song immediately uh, when I presented it to her. Uh, there was no uh, hesitation. She, she definitely knew the vibe, what it was uh, all about, so... When she uh, came around and did her parts, uh, it was just, you know, this kind of magic that sometimes happens uh, within the uh, recording process. And, and I think this was one of the, the more magic moments for this album. Uh, she, she definitely has a, a perfect voice uh, for that type of music, uh, mm. that kind of song. But also, uh, as you say, it worked really well with my, my uh, vocals as well, which was uh, really nice. It's, uh, they blend together very smoothly, I would say. Do you reckon you'll explore that with further recordings? Maybe, you know, more catatonia or maybe solo stuff? Yeah, you know, I'm always thinking of, of music that I want to do and, and maybe collaborations and stuff like that. You know, it's, mm. it's just a matter of, of finding the time to do it. Uh, right now, catatonia is the main focus, uh, of course, uh, Absolutely. But, you know, in the future, I would love to do maybe something more electronic uh, on the side and maybe working more with, with guests like Annie. You know, it's uh, it could be a lot of on on the horizon. You just need to find the time to, to actually make it happen. Yeah, it's hard, I know. But it sounds like those creative doors are open for you now. Like, it sounds yeah, like definitely. You're onto something. Yeah. 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 And uh, I saw on, on your Facebook that someone has got the album cover tattoo, cover tattoo already. Is that right? Yeah, I saw that. Yeah, it's amazing. I, I just hope he uh, he likes the the album when it's <laughs> it's coming out. Uh, yeah, no, but it's you know it shows the, some of the dedication that we have among the fans. It's it's uh, it's amazing. You know, I love to see that. It's uh, you know it's uh, it certainly uh, makes up for all the hassle. Uh, that's, uh, you know, being in a band, doing all the, the boring stuff, the traveling, uh, sitting on airplanes. But when, when you see stuff like that, it makes up for everything, you know. Have you got the band logo tattooed on or any other bands? I do have a, a few tattoos with uh, some lyrics from uh, one of my favorite bands, uh, Autopsy, from uh, the States. Yep. Uh, so I, I, uh, <laughs> I have a few <laughs> of their lyrics on, the, on me. Which is good, you know. It's uh, it's like a carpe diem, but uh, death metal style, you know. <laughs> All about it, man. Yeah. And uh, well, talking about that, you know, band took a bit of a break after last album cycle, and you did some uh, blood bathing with bloodbath. You did some blood bathing. Bloodbath, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, yeah, you were out blood bathing with bloodbath touring. <laughs> but uh, yeah. what else, what else happened during that time? What, what sort of kept you busy? Um, you know, the, the, the whole bloodbath thing took uh, some time. You know, we uh, wrote, recorded and released a new album and we did a, a 
you know, a bit of touring for it as well. So also I was uh, all the time uh, uh, keeping pretty busy writing music that would eventually end up on, on city burials, you know. So And I had another kid as well. So, uh, you know, I, I was not just sitting <laughs> on the no. couch. I was really busy. So <laughs> Yeah, I was wondering about that. I was like, man, you just... I was looking about what you, you've done over the last couple of years, and it's like you just haven't stopped. Like Cavatonia no. might have been, you know, just put on, on hold for a minute, but you just went, all right, well, let's do all this other stuff. Yeah, so, yeah, uh, sure. yeah, busy, busy man. But uh, yeah. I saw you, you were meant to be playing a show in Mexico last month. Is that right? And you're going to be doing double duties? Yeah, we were supposed to, but uh, uh, eventually we didn't go because of the the travel uh, restrictions that came at the at, at that time in in Sweden. They said you shouldn't be going abroad, so we had to cancel, which was uh, very unfortunate. But even though maybe the virus wasn't that spread uh, in uh, the Mexico area at the moment, we didn't want to end up in in quarantine somewhere, you know. So you have to to think a bit on. Um, what could happen, you know? So we, we uh, yeah, we had to cancel. Have you done but double we have duties? Done, uh, yeah, we've done double duties uh, a lot of times, actually. It's uh, it's interesting, you know, uh, going <laughs> from one extreme to the other. But, uh, you know, both of the bands are are very uh, dear to me. And, and there's no problem for me to switch between the two extremes because... Uh, they're both in my heart, so it's it's not really a problem. Because and is is in both with you. So how's that? How how's it working in both those? I, I guess musical extremes. He seems like he's like your uh, right hand man, really. You know what I mean? Yeah, I think we're uh, we're both our right man, hand man. You know. Yeah. So you know, it's it's. Um, I mean, we've been doing this together for almost thirty years. It's like we. We don't have to think about it anymore. It's not like we're, we're sitting around saying like, oh, I like to work with you. You know, it's we already know that. So it's mm. uh, it's very rewarding to have someone that you can trust so much in, in when it comes to music and, and not only the, the music, but also uh, the whole philosophy of the band. So we don't really have a problem with it. It's uh, very smooth. Yeah, it's a pretty special, uh, you know, working relationship you got there it sounds like you know you brothers for 30 years man that's that's a, a, an awesome thing not many people can say that you know what i mean it's yeah it's, yeah, it's cool it's really cool well yeah. uh what what about a uh, touring australia you, you plan on doing that in the next year when everything blows over can we see you again yeah definitely it's definitely uh in our plan uh, i think we uh we already talked about maybe starting in australia in the fall, we, we have to see what, what, what happens with the whole uh, situation now, mm. but it's definitely on, on the radar, you know. We'll, we'll have some cold beers ready for you, man. That's yeah, for sure. That's amazing. Yeah, <laughs> great. Thanks again for hanging out on the show, man, and uh, I want to wish you and the, be- the boys all the best for the release of City Burials, and uh, until then, stay safe and uh, keep shredding, bro. Yeah, thank you very much. Cheers. <laughs>